Rich Side K9, Midnight Motivation. Coming to you. What do we do at midnight when you got the coronavirus? You can't go out in town to train. Well, yes, you can. We go out pretty late, but we hang out on bike tables with Labrador puppies. Why is that? Shit works pretty good, actually. Old bike table. Scott just built him one in his barn, man. It's a square table, highly elevated. Specific reason for that. Not the point of this video. However, um, bored man cooped up. Kennel fever. Literally, kennel fever. And uh, this little Labrador, man, I love this dog. So this dog comes from way down south, southern Virginia, off a big old farm. And his owners and older gentleman who uh, is going to use them. Let's go run. Come on, somebody. Let's go. Good boys. Owner's going to use them for just to have a good time, man. Basically like an end-of-life dog. It's kind of cool. Owner's um, way up there, uh, pretty close to 90, actually, and wanted a little Labrador pup. We're going to walk through a real dark area real quick, and then we'll get over here. Some more lights will turn on. It'll get a little bit brighter. But the owner wanted a Labrador to finish out life with, and uh, whew, they got a hell of a lab. <laughs> it's like a little rocket ship. Crazy, wide open, little Labrador pup, but he's coming a long way. He's fully off leash. And uh, we got some fine tuning to do with them. We got some, my hairs. I was wearing a beanie, took it off. Doesn't look good on camera. Beard looking kind of sharp though. Anyway, um, he's doing good, but he's got some control issues, but we're getting there, man. It's a five month old lab. Five month old lab is a five month old lab, but we're rocking and rolling. Let's go see <laughs> my boy. You know, this is really, I mean, this dog is amazing. Um, but he's wide open. Say, I'm wide open. Let's go see who else we got in the kennel. And if a Labrador puppy wasn't enough, for your liking, here goes a little golden retriever puppy, Miss Sammy. Sammy didn't like the bite table, but we use this for place work sometimes, right? Just to bring them up here, work on some exposure, work on some confidence building, work on all that good stuff. That's what Sammy does. Sammy likes to jump. I don't like it when Sammy jumps, but Sammy likes to jump. Sammy wants to go back in the kennel and get some food because Sammy doesn't miss a meal, <laughs> ever. Sammy don't miss a, a piece of kibble. Sammy don't miss anything. But uh, the awesome part about Mr. Sammy is he's fully off leash and uh, he's rocking and rolling doing well i don't care man i don't know maybe later in life it'll change but right now i'm still in my young 40s so i still feel young 18 years old at heart never ever get that twisted but one thing about me man is i don't care how many dogs you train we've trained a lot of dogs rich i can't but it still always excites me yep the first time you can cut a dog off leash and let him run right we're on breaks and stuff the dog can just come out where's she at where's she at where's he at just come out and do their own thing off leash. I don't have any fence in here. The dog could run away. Pitch ass black out here. If I lose him in that darkness, the dog's gone forever. But he's highly trained. Rich side canine trained at that. <laughs> oh man, I've been cooped up too long. I gotta get out. Starting to think like a dog. Not a good thing. But uh Sammy's doing real well and uh we're having a good time. Yep. He's over there in the shadows. He likes to go to the bathroom private. But uh he does his little thing, but he's enjoying it. I don't, I don't care, man, how many dogs you train. What I was saying was, it's always cool the first time you get a dog off leash. The first time you really get it off leash where you're not nervous, you're not like, oh, man, please don't run. Um, and you truly have that communication. The dog is truly enjoying it, loving it, living that off leash lifestyle. It's always a good thing, man. It always makes you feel good as a trainer. I love it. And as I predicted, I'm not sure if you can really see that, but right over there, there, he's taking a number two. One of the best breeds next to a healer to humble any good trainer is a GSP. There you go, man. I said it. There you go. G keep your Malinois, keep your Dutch Shepherd, keep your Pitbull. Yeah, they come in by the hundreds. But a little nervy GSP, ooh, a little bit neurotic GSP, it'll humble you every time. Anyway, not awfully shit on a long line, 60 foot long line at that. So we're doing real good. But we use this, it's actually a bike table, aggression table, but we use it as a little place pad and um, you want to go run. So if I make. If I make him hold place too long, he'll start that little GSP shake. He wants to go run, and he does it all the time. Anyway, we're going to let you go run. Let's go run. Come on. Oh, there he goes. He's gone. And uh, so he has his freedom right now. So we're on break. He's on a – don't you jump in my van. You know, it's a real quick way to piss me off. There you go. Yeah, use your brain. Come on. This way. Let's go back through the black area right here real quick. It's kind of dark. I got half my lights turned off because it was too damn bright out here. The other half turned on. There he goes. But – uh gsps man we have trained sold imported put on contract worked on house pets we do a lot of gsps and uh i love gsps they're an awesome breed but don't get it twisted man these dogs are like the energy of a malinois personality of a lab and a little bit overbred right now so they can be way hyper neurotic nervous skittish timid scary where's she at right over there but uh long lines man can't speak to about long lines they're all new trainers out there don't take the risk don't take the chance 
If I lose a dog on the mountain at nighttime, it's a disaster. I mean, all kinds of bad shit happens up there to house pets, and down there, there's nothing but hundreds and hundreds, thousands and thousands of acres. So, if I lose a dog, and it's pitch ass black outside, it's a bad night for everybody involved. So, long lines. A long line will save you every time. A long line can stop a disaster. The ends never justify the means. Always be safe. So, if a dog's not fully off leash, dog's on an e collar, hmm, recalls like 50%, but it just got here a couple days ago. It'll get a lot better. When it's better, no long line. But until that moment, keep it on long line. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Trying to chase a GSP at nighttime through pastures. Whoo hoo, bad experience. I don't care what you got. Anyway, real friendly. So he's got some uh, some man issues. Had some man issues. Look at this, look at this, look at this. So I let him do that to me right now. We'll clean it up later because he's a nervous, skittish, timid dog and he was terrified of me. Oh, okay, not my camera. He was terrified of me when he first came, sitting in the corner growling, all kinds of silly stuff. So now that we're cool, we bond, we move, we hike, we explore together, and he's happy to see me, I want to maintain that. The little jump out, give me a kiss, that'll clean up in like two little quick lessons, like on week three, closing on week four. But not right now. Right now, I need full motivation, enthusiasm, engagement, jumping, esprit de corps, happy to see me, rocking and rolling, begging for my attention. Last but never least, the one bird dog that make you shake your head in disbelief, a damn springer. And this little springer, has some issues, but we're doing good. We're working good, man. I actually love this dog. This dog is so friendly, so happy-go-lucky. Just got here a little bit ago. Not awfully shit, as you can clearly see. Use that long line. But check this out, man. I just showed you a Labrador hunting dog, a Golden Retriever hunting dog, a GSP hunting dog, and a Springer hunting dog. I could show you all kinds of dogs right now. Some bike dogs, some crazy dog fighting dogs, all these wild dogs. Not dog fighting that I do. I don't dog fight. I hate dog fighters, but dogs that are conditioned dog fight that are here for help. What my point was... <laughs> um, but I'm showing you some hunting dogs, some unknown breeds. I think I've been here for too long. Anyway, um, this little one right here, the little story is kind of cool. Okay, now shut up, Bob. Is about to go to France. That's right. About to jump on a plane in the midst of this virus situation and go to France with Mama. Mama's getting sent over there. So anyway, we're doing some touch up here, working on all kinds of stuff. Spent a lot of late nights in inner city areas. It's absolutely deserted. Kind of cool, but I got to expose them to it. But before we get that, we got to have control. We got to have... All kinds of stuff going on. So we're spending a lot of time working because we're going to basically do a turnover. And I think he's going right to Dulles Airport after the turnover. Okay, nice. Bye. Oh, sure. And get right on a plane. Kind of cool. But the awesome part about this dog is that environmentally dogs rock solid. So he's got some issues we're working with. Come on, Shabbat. Let's go. Oh, Shabbat. He's got some issues he's working with. However, um, environmentally, man, he's really sound. He shows no fear of anything, which is awesome for a little Springer. Because not all of them like that. A lot of Springers are, that we get, are very nervous. You know, the one thing, man, I'll address about Ridgeside is that we often give opinions on breeds, right? A lot of dog trainers do, and it's cool. I, I try to stay very neutral and very open-minded. But you got to remember, when we give opinions on the breeds, we're not getting the good breeds. Not, not the good breeds. We're not getting good representations most of the time with the breeds, right? You tell me healer, I'm thinking wild, crazy alligator dog. People are like, no, man, we have healers as pets. They're awesome. They're great. Not the ones that we get. You know what I mean? You tell me GSP, outside of ones on contract that we bring in, they're mostly hyper neurotic, nervous, skittish dogs all the time. And, and we train them by the week, right? Little Springers, like this little girl right here, on the move, right? We train them often, um, but we don't get the best Springers, right? We get Springers with issues. Same with German Shepherds, Pit Bulls, you name it. As a dog trainer, it's hard sometimes to give an opinion on the best or worst breed best to train, worst to train, whatever, because the dogs you get are often, my hair is doing weird stuff tonight. The dogs you get are often not exactly like creme de la creme. If they were, they wouldn't be in training. They're in training for a reason, right? So just something to think about. Going back, check in. That's a good doy. Anyway, midnight motivation, go inside, emails, make some food, eat some food, send some emails out, check in with the team, talk to my people. Let's get it going.